Today, me and my friend Jordan attempt to survive 700 days in hardcore Minecraft. If either of us die, the world is deleted forever. Can we both survive the next 100 days without dying? Stay tuned to the very end to find out. For this video, we had three main goals. Number one, quadruple the size of our creeper farm. Number two, finally build a guardian farm. And number three, begin construction on a nether hub. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. It's 100% free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy. Welcome back everyone to 100 Days World and today we're going to attempt to survive 700 days. As always in the first day, we like to fly around and look at our world and what we've achieved so far. One of the first things I noticed was that I had no food and in Minecraft you kind of need it, especially in hardcore. So I went straight to the storage system, to our golden carrot chest and yeah, we've got like no golden carrots. This is a bit of an issue. So we then went over to the carrot and potato farm that's worked on by our villagers to see how busy they've been and it turns out they hadn't been very busy at all. This could definitely be more efficient and perhaps we can move this to a better place so it's always running and also it's kind of out of the way anyway we took all the carrots back with us put them inside of the carrots chest and then went to go get some gold and we're also very low on that as well this means a trip to our gold farm in the nether will definitely be needed very soon time to get some rockets now but again we're incredibly low on all materials this episode is going to require a lot of grinding if we're going to want to get anything done also this is our first video on the 1.18 update so it's time for us to go and explore all the new features the sun was set in on day 601 which means it's time to go to bed on day 602 we flew off in the attempt to find some new biomes on our journeys we found a huge cave which looked really really cool right in the middle of the wilderness we decided to fly down and take a look but there were creepers absolutely everywhere so we got out of there as quick as we could after flying off a little bit more we found an azalea tree and right below these are the lush caves at this point we hadn't seen a single one yet so i dug straight down in excitement got to the bottom and just look at this I think the flowers that hang off the ceiling are really cool. The moss is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite blocks in Minecraft now, along with Deep Slate. The drip leaves look pretty cool as well. And overall, it's just a really, really nice cave. So we grabbed the moss, the little azalea trees, some glow berries, and everything we could get our hands on. Diamond! We then flew through and it seemed that the lush cave was joined in with like a big Deep Slate cave, which looked really, really cool. To get some glow berries, Jordan then did an airstrike. And we also found the first amethyst geode in the series. These were a thing back in 1.17, but I'm pretty sure we haven't even found one yet. So I turned it from this to this. Oops. And after exploring those caves on day 603, we came across biomes like this, which make the update so much more special. But let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to reset some of the chunks around our home village so we can get some really cool arctic mountains and new biomes around. Jordan made a flight course in a new cave and this is how it went. As it was night time and we weren't finding anything else that really wowed us, we decided to head back home. And we headed back as the sun rose, but as you can see, I was getting really low on rockets. I ended up running out of rockets and it was a long way back from here, but Jordan was clutch, flew back to me and hooked me up with some of his. I made it back with two to spare and went to empty our inventories. Our massive storage system needs improving. Originally in 1.17, we only used two lanes, but now we've got a new update and loads more blocks. We're going to need to open the third one. Around the back is where all the items that can't get sorted go to. And we had so many that were backlogged. It was unreal. We're going to need to sort these out real quick. Jordan began crafting some rockets with the gunpowder he found at the creeper farm, or at least I thought he was, before we had a paper fight and I made some rockets. To conclude day 604, we both went to sleep after a long session of traveling. AFK in the creeper farm became very much needed and the idea of perhaps building another three next to it became prevalent just so we could get a ton of gunpowder always coming in but first it's time to get rid of this eyesore which is the manual pumpkin and melon farm that looks so much better before we do anything crazy like build another three creeper farms we're gonna need to repair our elytras and tools they're not completely broken or anywhere near it but you just don't want to take that chance So once we repaired our elytras and tools and got back home, we ran to the storage system and grabbed some shulker boxes. We then took a load of cobble and filled up many shulker boxes with it, smelted a load more cobble to get stone, and then smelted that to get smooth stone. Finally, it all smelted after a full day of waiting. And on day 608, we turned the smooth stone into slabs and put 19 stacks into three different shulkers whilst Jordan worked on all the other materials. Jordan also turned most of the wood we had into trapdoors that we needed, which meant that apart from oak, we had next to nothing left in the wood department, which meant a huge wood cutting spree would be needed as soon as possible. So I grabbed some spare shulkers, threw one at Jordan, and it was time for some deforestation. 
No matter how far you get in your Minecraft world, you will always find yourself cutting down trees, which is like the first thing you do. So this really took us back to the beginning of our world. And then we decided to put a decent little grind in and get as much wood as we could. But we didn't want to spend too long doing it. So these were the results. And I have to say, we didn't do too bad fitting over a shulker box between us. I then made the rest of the materials. We had repeaters, buckets, campfires. Of course, Jordan got the rest. And as you can see, all of these shulkers were set and ready to go to build three more creeper farms. We've now fully built the creeper farms, but we needed to complete one of the most crucial things when doing this, and that was to put all the trapdoors down so that no other mobs can spawn apart from the creepers. So after three full days of placing down trapdoors, we had finally completed it, which meant that we had three creeper farms successfully ready to go and ready to AFK, which meant that I spent an hour IRL time of AFK in these, which is three days in game. And whilst I did this, Jordan AFK the gold farm so that we could top up on our food supply, getting those golden carrots. At the end of the three days of AFK in, I flew down to check the results. I ended up using a totem like an absolute plonker. And remember guys, this is hardcore mode, which means if either of us die, the world gets deleted forever. Check the chest full of gunpowder. That was a good amount to be fair. But before I carried on with anything, I needed to get myself another totem because me being so clumsy, I could have easily ended up dying again very soon. Day 624, I ended up grabbing some sand, then took some gunpowder out of the chest and made some TNT. definitely went overkill with the amount of TNT that I made but Jordan and I then started lacing the factory with it and just rigging the whole place with TNT. Jordan went to top off on fireworks and yeah. I said I was clumsy before and right here proves it. I accidentally set it off. But it didn't do too much damage. Jordan then did the roof. We placed a load more and we set it off. Probably should have started from the top, but this is the remains of the factory. You may be able to see in the distance that this demolition was brought to you by our gunpowder farms. Day 625, we then set forth to destroy the remains of the factory. And voila, we had a crater. Pathways were next on our list of things to do, as we kind of just fly to get everywhere these days and ignore the ground. And pathways are actually a massive, massive part of any like good build. So with us creating a village and a sort of empire, as you like, we wanted to make it so that all the pathways connected for all of our land. I started going ham with my shovel to create a random pathway, whilst Jordan went more methodical. And then we began randomly placing blocks in the gaps that we mined out. And to make sure that no mobs spawn to ruin this, we spam torches on our new pathways. I have to say, they do look amazing Amazing, but the torches are super ugly. Sea lanterns with some carpets over would look absolutely awesome and hide all of the light and keep mobs away. The only issue is we don't have any sea lanterns. Maybe a sea lantern farm would help us out with this. So we got going on day 628. I went to go get some soul sand, dirt from our storage system, wind down a load of obsidian from an end tower in the end, and also chopped down some more trees for wood. The next day, I went and got some campfires, and Jordan and I met up, and he threw me all the materials that he collected whilst I got the rest. Then took off on day 630 towards the ocean monument, and eventually we had arrived. But guess what? We only went and forgot the water breathing potions again, just like when we defeated the ocean monument back many episodes ago. So it's time to go home and brew some. Time to head back. It's day 631 and we are back with water breathing potions. It's a good job we brought those first time around. But we then spent the rest of the day up until day 634 drinking our potions and building the guardian farm.
build was complete, but not fully complete, as we now needed to build the part inside of the nether where the guardians would end up dying. So we now built our collection area. After everything was complete, we AFK'd the Guardian farm for three days from day 635 to 638. And on day 638, we checked for the loot and we took our rewards. Just like the gunpowder farm, there was a decent amount there. We can't complain. When we got back home, we turned the shards and crystals into lanterns. Well, eventually anyway. Took a little bit of trial and error, but we got there in the end. And now that we had our new lanterns, we destroyed all the torches on our new pathway. They were super ugly, mined up some holes in the ground, and hid sea lanterns with some mossy carpets on top. This made it look like grass, and it fit in really well. It also hides the light, so you don't have torches just scattered around everywhere. Once this was done, I went around and added some street lamps. We have a bit of an issue, guys. We are dangerously low on wood. So before we got too low, I went to grab my trusty old shulker box and I renamed my shulker box with a very boring name. I did this because I want you guys to leave some suggestions down in the comments and I may just choose yours. As I was going off to get wood, I was leaving Jordan behind, but not in a bad way. He was going to be working on his own little project. We'll be checking in with him along the way, but for now, we say goodbye and it's time for me to go on a massive wood cutting spree. All this wood chopping is making my arm hurt, so it's time to check back in on Jordan to see how he's doing. It looks like he's created a medieval tower that definitely fits in with the theme of our village. I can't wait to see the finished product. Forgot about dark oak wood, so I went back on day 646 to go get some of that. And I then returned on day 647 with all of the wood. And overall, I'd say I was pretty successful. After dropping off the wood in the storage system, I noticed an unfinished task from an earlier episode. We created a lovely new villager trading hall, but only a few of the villagers had trades. It's time to change that. I crafted some fletching tables and then put them down to give out some jobs, but only one wanted to take it. It was very frustrating, but after a bit of persuasion, they finally came around and took the jobs. I then labeled up all of the fletchers, just in case I forgot what each of the different trades were. Then crafted some lecterns and spent the next two days not only rolling through trades, but trying to get these ignorant villagers to take the jobs. I tried for the longest time, but the other two were being ignorant and wasted my time, so I killed them off. But shh, don't tell Jordan. And finally, to air out my frustrations, I went to visit the original brown panda waffle and told him all about it. It's now day 650 and Jordan's lighthouse is complete. I've got to say, he did an amazing job. It looks absolutely awesome. And it even has the redstone lights at the top, which circle around. Leave a like on the video if you think this is awesome, guys. And also type nice build Jordan down in the comments. Whilst roaming our territory, I ran past our iron farm throughout the 650 days. But it's pretty out of place right now. I feel like it's in the way of a lot of things. So we said goodbye to Pancho the zombie. And the villagers and it was time to say goodbye to the og iron farm and move on to bigger and better things i grabbed some cobblestone so we could fill in the land as well as some dirt and on day 651 it was time to get to work we filled in the land with some cobble and as night time struck we finished off filling it in with dirt and boom, it looks so much better. Jordan also made this little sign just to show off his happiness. Another thing that was in the way was the aesthetic melon farm that I'd built a long time ago, and it was time to tear that down too. We then terraformed some of the land and we had to extend the bottom of the walls. But the next two days on day 653 and 654, we extended the pathway from the end of the bridge to the main entrance. And we also improved our existing pathways as they were very, very vanilla. All we'd done is right click using our shovels. So we decided to use different materials like granite, wooden planks, and place down a load of leaves. And it just made the whole place feel a lot better and look so much nicer. The next day, we then made two mini huts. We made these by the bridge and it sort of tied in with our little market theme we've got going on down by the storage system. And after we made those, we made one in the corner. This part of land was very bland, so these buildings were good little fillers to give the land some purpose. 
On day 657, we needed some materials and some of that was white wool. So we had loads of sheep in our barn and they're all multicolored. So I made a load of them white just before shearing them and we gathered a whole load of materials that we have ready right here in a shulker box. It was time to build an iron golem statue in commemoration of the OG iron farm. Let's get to work. Iron Golem statue was pretty much finished now and we could hear a villager and we were so unsure of where it was and it was kind of freaking us out. So we started smacking around and we ended up shadow boxing an invisible villager. He drank an invis potion but eventually we found it which was pretty unfortunate for him. We put some trees around and bone milled them because there was a lot of empty land and we wanted to fill it up as much as possible. The trees are a great way of giving it a natural look and it definitely fills all the land in. Later that day we started building a brand new wheat farm. And apparently these are really rare, the skeleton horses. But we found these quite a lot along the way. Maybe it's just because we're not sleeping enough. But we killed the skeletons and Jordan had made two name tags. And we decided to call them Les and Des. Why? I'm not sure. That was Jordan's idea. But these were our two new friends. We put some saddles on them, took them over to the stables. But Jordan's got shot down by another skeleton. His one must have been really weak. But to his skeleton horse, we say rest in peace. Not to worry though, because we did find him another one. To make sure that didn't happen again, we very quickly rode them over to the stables and put them inside next to our horses. The morning after, we grabbed some more stuff for making farms, as we just enjoy doing it so much, it seems. And there was some sand on the side of our island that was really out of place. So we turned all of that into dirt to make it look more natural, broke down the wall of our wheat farm, and then extended it. We then spent the next two days building carrot, potato, and wheat farms all around the nether portal to fill in the land and make it look nicer. The main island is now looking a lot more complete. We were very happy with it. So we turned our attention to goal number two, which is the nether hub. But first up was a quick trip to the XP farm, which turned into a long one as the enderman farm was really, really slow today. We weren't quite sure what this is. Maybe it was a server we're playing on. But yeah, this took a long time to repair everything. Once everything was repaired, it was time to go to the nether to chop down some red and blue trees. Neither Jordan or I have ever used these kinds of woods before. So we wanted to experiment. We needed a decent amount. So we spent two days chopping down as much as we could. So I spent two days chopping down the trees whilst Jordan worked on mining quartz. So we then worked together for a further two days to mine quartz because we're going to need an insane amount. On day 669, we checked out how many materials would accumulate between us. We realized that it definitely was not enough. But mining quartz, it's a bit repetitive and kind of boring. So we needed to change the scenery. So we grabbed some more shulker boxes each, color coordinating them, and then took off in search of a desert. We ended up finding one next to a really cool looking biome. But now it's time to destroy the land beneath us for all of bit sand. These are the results of our two day sand mining trip and all I can say is thank god Jordan brought some spare shulker boxes. We visited the old smelter building from I think episode 2. We were here to smelt the sand because as you know, we blew up the factory earlier in the video. Although it was small, it will definitely work. However, we were out of coal and I feel like in this 100 days world, we're always short on certain materials. Anyway, to kill three birds with one stone, we headed to the nether to relocate our wither skeleton farm, to fix our shovels, get coal and also bones for white dye. By the end of the day, we'd finally located the fortress and that had taken us a good while to find. When we arrived on day 673, there was some coal, but not an excessive amount. There was a decent amount of bones though. We then killed skeletons after waiting for a long time each time. It's not the most efficient and we can always make a new one that will work better, but we already spent so long in this and barely use it, so we'll just leave it for now. The next day we were killing more skeletons and waiting even longer. This felt like forever. I then let Jordan have his turn and I turned the coal into coal blocks and I had so many bones it was unreal. It was then time to go back home and start the smelting and we might not have enough coal, but we shall see. I also put the bones into the sorting system because I'm lazy and couldn't be bothered to find the chest myself. As the sand was smelting, we wrote down a list of every material we would need, leaving the rest of the quartz and the netherwood to the end of the list as we could get those before officially starting the build. We collected a fair bit and then collected up our shulkers with some empty ones too for the quartz, brought the glass over and went straight through the nether portal. We flew straight off to get some warp stem and then started going ham on getting some quartz. 
Gordon said he remembered the way we originally took many episodes ago of getting on top of the nether to make the gold farm. So I trusted him and followed him. And long and behold, he found the exact way of getting there. It's pretty insane if you ask me. Fair play to Jordan. I pearled through on top of the roof whilst Jordan stayed below. If you would have come up too, this may have messed up the portals and we might have been stuck up here forever. I then connected the portals from the overworld to the roof of the nether and Jordan jumped straight through. We put down some markings, put down the shulker boxes and we were ready to go. Let's get started on this massive build of the nether hub. Got to click record on the cinematic, but we did fill in the floor. Day 687, there were so many mobs on top of the roof. We didn't put torches on there because it would look really ugly. And plus, we won't be on the roof much anyway. But as we were building up here, we definitely went to battle. We also realized the next day that we ran out of quartz. It was inevitable, but we were just dreading the day this happened. So we jumped off the roof and flew down to our nether portal. But before going through the portal, I realized that I'd need our obsidian. So I grabbed the obsidian and then actually went through the portal. And when we got back to the overworld, we flew away from our sword portal to make a new one. We're back underneath the nether roof from this new portal. I swear I've said portal like 500 times now. But we were under the nether roof and we came across the old bastion that we blew up in 600 days. But instead of looking around that, it was time to get some more quartz. After a full day of mining quartz, we believed our mission was complete. So as we got back through to the overworld, we destroyed the portal we just created and went straight back through the other one. We spent day 689 finishing the roof by thickening the white lines. As it was a big build, the thicker design would definitely look better than the thinner design. We used a lot of rockets flying away to compare from a distance. I also gave Jordan my silk touch pickaxe so we could start breaking the floor. Whilst he started on this, I got some red dye, then tried to find some blue dye in the backlog chests, which would enable me to make some purple dye to make the purple glass. The floor of our sword nether portal was purple and we thought it would be some good continuity to have purple floor as you go through the nether hub. And I ended up finding a load of purple dye and purple glass in the chests. What a result. I also found some smooth quartz blocks and quartz slabs which come in handy when detailing. And at Jordan's request, the last thing we needed was a beacon. And I can definitely see why this thing takes ages to mine up. The beacon didn't help much, but it being there kind of made us feel a bit better. I crafted some purple glass and there was quite a lot in the end and we then went ham on filling in the floor. Once we completed the floor, we started working on the doorways. We created a unique sort of archway shape and we did it out of our favorite block deep slate tiles. The next day we then detailed the ceiling and edited the floor design also. Day 692, I started building a sizable portal, but just from using the obsidian we had, we could tell we were coming up a little bit short. We grabbed some more rockets and headed off to the end portal. We targeted the smallest tower in the end, and we mined it all the way down in some good time as well, leaving one floating piece of bedrock behind. Now we had the obsidian we needed, it was time to go back. When we did arrive back at the nether hub on day 693, we were ambushed by hoglins. We didn't have swords on us, so we had to use our axes, but we took them out pretty easily. We then got on, making the new portal taller for now. And whilst Jordan continued, I returned home real quick to get more deep slate and turned it into new bricks that we'd need. I thought this would be enough, but I then second guessed myself and decided to take as much as I could just in case. The next thing to do was to start the design around the portal in the middle and from here on was just pretty much loads of designing. I crafted up some quartz pillars and some slabs to make it look better. These pillars were a lot better for the texture. 
and then put some deep slate tiles underneath the blocks that we built with just so it couldn't be seen from the ground as it was just glass and then had a big brain moment for once yes very rare i know i thought it'd be good to bring the portal up one level having it all on the same level was a bit boring and having it so you'd have to walk up into the portal just had a nice ring to it jordan and i then worked on the roof of the portals together and we filled in the window shaped arches with some purple glass I then filled up the middle with deep slate tiles, lit up the portals, breaking the old one, going through it, coming back, testing to see if it works, and it did. GG. I was really happy that the portals were working, but we weren't fully satisfied with the design so far. So we turned the walls into pillars, broke up our shoulder boxes to clear the floor, and moved on to clearing up the ground below, starting with the old nether portal. We then broke down the temporary beacon, and eventually we finished taking it all down. We wanted to put it in the center because it would look super weird if it wasn't. We brought some spare iron blocks of us in a shulker. So hopefully all together it should be enough to build a beacon that has more than one effect. Jordan went back to the overworld to make beacons out of the remaining never stars we had lying around. Whilst I got cracking with the new beacon setup. I waited around quite literally all day for Jordan to get back, but something was taking him a really long time. So after a full day of waiting, I decided to hop back into the overworld and he gave me some very clear instructions to go to the sphere structure and face the bridge. He then gave me a countdown of three, two, one, and then to look straight up as I saw flying TNT, which revealed my face. Jordan did this as a surprise as it was my birthday as we were recording this, then set off a nice firework display to celebrate. This was really nice of Jordan and he really didn't have to do this, but it was a nice little way to celebrate my birthday. We ended day 699 as we always do by hopping straight into bed and waking up on day 700. The first thing we did on day 700 was go back to the nether and place down the two beacons that Jordan had crafted. Unfortunately, we didn't have a third, but that sets a goal for the next video to get as many beacons as we could. We set haste, jump boost, and speed as our effects and had a little fun with the jumping. So there we have it guys, we survived 700 days of hardcore Minecraft. Can we make it to 1000? Let me know what you thought of our adventure down in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, it's 100% free and you can always change your mind. And I'll catch you guys in 800 days.